books are a lot like people. In order for a person to have a profound effect on your life, you need to meet that person at the right time. Meet someone when you're not ready, and the whole relationship fizzles. Jonathan Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach is a story I first met too soon. I was maybe seven or eight years old, as I recall, and I didn't much care for the book or the movie. Now, if I remember correctly, I don't think I even watched the entire movie or read the whole book. It was too weird and too strange, too existential. I didn't remotely understand it. Raised in a Roman Catholic grade school, I had already been brainwashed by years of lies that Judeo-Christian mythology was historical fact. Programmed by Abrahamic dogma in those formative years to worship a Semitic zombie vampire, my psyche had been fed so much imbecilic propaganda I foolhardily believed in burning bushes which talked to God's chosen master race. But a tale of talking seagulls? Oh, that was crazy. I couldn't follow the story at all. And the book is very brief. I mean, it hardly qualifies as a novella. At less than 9,000 words, it's barely a short story. Jonathan Seagull tells the tale of a seagull who lives with a mundane flock of birds while yearning for a more meaningful life. And during the course of the story, he learns and grows and evolves until he finally returns to his flock and is lauded as a messiah, a label he does not desire nor deserve. The metaphors and lessons are very obvious ones. Make your dreams come true, disobey the flock, trust your heart, be careful of what people turn you into. And when I discovered the book again at the age of 20, my entire perspective had shifted. I finally understood that every single theism on earth was followed by delusional self-righteous assholes who arrogantly presume they alone are the sole purveyors of truth. Now the book spoke to me. Now it made more sense. Now I was old enough to fall in love. Jonathan Livingston Seagull not only changed my life, it changed the life of the author. Jonathan Livingston Seagull made Richard Bach a multimillionaire and a household name. Why did it finally speak to me? There was a day in my life I recall very clearly that was a turning point for me. I went for a hike in the woods at Nelson's Ledges in Ohio when I was about 14 years old. And at the time, my mother lived about two miles away from the park. And during the two-mile walk back to her house, I had a true existential moment. You know that part in the book Dandelion Wine by Ray Bradbury when he realizes he's alive for the first time? That's what happened to me on that walk. That was my first moment of really seeing with clarity how vibrant and alive and astonishing it was to be a sentient soul experiencing the world. I noticed everything that day. The crunch of gravel on the road underfoot, the luminous saturation of color in the fields and the sky, everything so vivid it was like awakening from a dream. And perhaps that metaphor is accurate, because I finally began to shake off the oppressive mantle of man-made religion on that walk. I finally saw that no human being on the face of this earth has ever possessed any authority to tell me my place in the universe. I came to realize that every person on earth who dared to preach and demand my relationship with God be the same as theirs was a fucking demon. Every religion 
that zombified their zealots into thinking they were better than others, or above others, or chosen in the eyes of God to somehow be superior to others, was nothing more than a death cult of pure and unadulterated evil. That's when I realized that all these believers were victims of something ghastly. Out there on that road, among those fields, I finally saw the universe for what it was. Beautiful, idyllic, flawless, impassive. The consciousness of all divine light was manifested only through my own sentience. We all stand as the conduits of God. No one has the power to define that for you. I decided in that moment that to find my place in the universe, I would spend more time among the country roads and the beaches and the gentle streams of woodlands. For if there were a voice of the universe, that is where it would speak to me. Not through other people, or churches, or synagogues, or clerics, or shamans. I would study no religion, I would embrace no philosophy. For I didn't want to be tainted by the beliefs of others. I wanted no one to influence me. The only way to discover this path was to do it on my own. So I did. I spent many years working out my own philosophy of how the world worked, what felt true to my heart, what my instincts gravitated towards. For if there were a benevolent divine force within nature, then it stands to reason that I would have to find her. Were I to seek her with an open and innocent heart, she wouldn't leave me to flounder in chaos. The only possible destinations were truth or self-deception. But at least the possible delusions would be my own, not the force-fed dogma of others. And in time I did find my truths, even if they were quantified against nothing more than my own moral compass. And I never wrote any of this down, I just kept it in my head my outlooks, my beliefs, my philosophies. Then, in a few years, I stumbled into Richard Bach. I was in a bookstore looking for a birthday present for a friend. And she was having a bit of a spiritual crisis in her life, and I saw Jonathan Livingston Siegel on the shelf, and I vaguely remembered it was supposed to be some uplifting, hippie, metaphysical hogwash. I figured... Since my friend was so distraught, that might be good for her. So I bought it. And when I got home, I read it for myself and finished it in about 30 minutes. Immediately after I finished reading, I went right back to the bookstore and bought another copy for myself. I was astonished. Here was a book that articulated the spiritual sensibilities I had already discovered. All these weird and crazy ideas I had, things I never heard anyone else talk about, were all in that book. See, up until that point, I thought I was all alone. I had no idea that anyone else in the world had started to view life the way I saw it. Jonathan Livingston Siegel helped to validate many of my opinions about the nature of the human spirit. And perhaps, Everything I believe is completely wrong. Perhaps I'm entirely off base, and the outlook of Jonathan Livingston Siegel really is a load of crap. When all is said and done, and our brief time here is over, discovering the truth doesn't really make any difference. Soaring on seagull wings, you finally see that the goddess herself is free to be an agnostic because nothing else matters beyond the simple glory of love and living. The overwhelming beauty and awe of the now can never be diminished. And within that thrill of knowing you are alive, of feeling it to your very core, being more awake and cognizant than you have ever been, you are living in heaven on earth. You soar with angel wings 
to transcend all the deception. In the instant of knowing I was truly alive, and that realization of our transient spark shining and extinguishing, suspended in that second, is where I found everlasting life. Reading a book like Jonathan Livingston Seagull will remind you of that moment every time you pick it up. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep speaking English, America. We speak American English. We speak American.